Travis yesterday said something interesting that it's usually, not always the case, but he said it's usually the first thought when you honestly, truthfully seek him and inquire on the Lord of how you should go out into the marketplace and generate a, a stream of income and build a business and build a life according to his will. And you sit there and you allow the first thought, he writes it down. That's what, that's his strategy. He writes it down. He's like, usually it's typically that first thought that comes to mind. You might write YouTube channel. You might write construction business. You might write health business, um, you know, supplements, whatever it may be. And then the second thought is from the accuser, Satan, to, to trash that idea, to tell you why that's not going to work because you're not a good speaker, because you're not a good salesperson, because you're not good on camera, because you've never started a business before, because you've never made that kind of money before, because you don't have the startup capital, da, 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 da. And now you go seek out a guru to help you process all the reasons why this won't work instead of going it through him. So that's how I want to kind of close it here with you guys all that have spent the time. By, by, by the way, real, real quick, ahead. sorry. So you, if you guys want to know what my definition of financial freedom is, we can we can all be financially free right now, like in this moment, right? And it's just by simply asking God, hey, what lies am I believing about money, right? Like my my definition of financially free is not having a passive income where you don't have to work anymore, right? Like that's to me, that's not financially free because I know a lot of quote unquote financially free Christians that are so enslaved by what they believe about money. Correct. Right. Like my my definition of financially free is: Are you truly reliant on God and not money? Like, are you truly free from not allowing money to do what God's asking you to do and for you to hinder your perspective on God? Absolutely. Right. And that's, that's for me, it's like, that's financial freedom, right? Cause, cause financial freedom from the world perspective will do really well for you during your time on earth. But that definition is horrible. If you look at the eternal perspective, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. if you look at financially free from a heaven, like an eternal perspective of like, Hey, like, I just want to be free, right? Like if God asked me to write a check to my enemy for $15,000, I want to be able to do it. If you can do that, you're financially free because it means you're, you're prioritizing God's kingdom over your own resources and over your own desires and over your own safety and over your own fear, right? So that's a litmus test. If you can right now in this moment, write a check, an uncomfortable number for your, uh, for your enemy, like so if you're a big Trump supporter, if you could, if God tells you to write a check for $5,000 to the Biden campaign and you can do it cheerfully because it's the joy comes from your obedience to the Lord, not the actual action, congratulations, you are financially free. That's beautiful. I like that because it just takes away from all the traditional and alternative financial education that even I put out. That Again, it's not saying that those things are bad. It's when those become the thing rather than God first and have all those things, have the life insurance policy, have the influence in the political parties, have the, the influence in business and marketing and have the social media influence and authority and, and credibility and reputation, have it all. Those are not bad things. These are desires. God put it in our heart to have those desires to begin with. It's a matter when those become greater than him. And that's where we have those pivots and corrections. That, that's what this boot camp was all about. 